Hello and welcome. My name is Kalondu Musimi. And when you see me, you see an exclusive interview about to go down. And of course, I'm seated next to my colleague, a friend, and one of the biggest names we have in the radio industry, Mike Mando. Hola, hola. You find your drum rolls. You find your drum rolls. I don't know where they Oh, where they Yeah. What the, do you know what that means? I don't know, but it means in a kanika kikamba kikamba. Yeah, it's kikamba. Weather means we are here. Oh. So when you're told weather, you respond by weather. Oh. We are here and we are here. All right. Life continues. Mike, weather. Weather. Ah, kabisa, kabisa. Hey. <laughs> Mike, you speak a lot of kikamba. Why is that? No, I actually don't. Funny enough, I don't know how to speak kao. Um, because so you have to understand this. So mm-hmm. my my dad before he passed on, Ali mm-hmm. Kwamkamba. Uh, my mom is Taita. Mm-hmm. In our house, mm-hmm. we only spoke English yeah. or Swahili. Wow. So I never got to learn Kikamba. So every day I try and get Sess to help me learn a, at least a few words in Kao. Yeah. Every once in a while. You fooled me to to to, to believe you know Kikamba because at the corridors in Akwanga, like we must say, we must say. Yeah, fake it till you make it. Wow. <laughs> and you're doing a very good job with faking it till you make it. But you, we already we know you uh, as a classic 105 presenter. We drive shows, but you also, you know, uh, uh, do breakfast shows as well. Um what's your drive show about? Cuz most of the time what I hear is relationships, relationships and relationships. No, no, no. As we do we, we don't try and do relationships. We look at the funny side of different situations. Oh. Yeah. So for example, like on the breakfast show yes they do focus a lot on relationships yeah. and so when I'm there, I have to follow the format of that show. Yeah. But in the afternoon what we do is we look at stories that create uh, that are creating conversation, but the funny side of it. So, yes. for example, like uh, we had how Mata Karua was uh, named, you know, uh, DP, running mate rather, wa, wa Raila. So we'd look at the funny side of that. Yeah, if if uh, so and so has done something um, that's uh, worthy of conversation, we just look at a different side of it. I call it having that third eye. Yeah. Any story that just has that is trending that is happening we look at the third eye we say okay how do we look at this differently mm-hmm. and that's how Sess and i do the show yeah. yeah so that's what the drive show is all about just yeah. to look at the other side of what everyone is talking about yeah, yeah. i think i got it mixed up with the breakfast show yeah. but how's your relationship with Sess, by the way huh mm-hmm. what mm-hmm. it is up. okay i know it's good but Sess is is quite the perfectionist yeah yeah she needs everything done right and right there's no yeah and so it's sometimes you sit back and you think about it and we, we in in radio we try and um for some for lack of a better way to put it sometimes we try and wing it yeah but Cess is not that person she's very meticulous in how she does her, her job yeah. she wants things to be perfect yeah. and she will expect it of you yeah. And I mean, she's an icon in Kenyan radio, so I respect her on that level. And I, I truly believe that there's a lot I learned from her. Yeah. And uh, so I'm happy with it. The relationship is good. Uh, yeah. We are currently top in yeah. Nairobi. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, I believe in the country. I think you know, one of our competitors, but we are, we are going. Yes. Pole pole too. Wow, congratulations for that. And of course, uh, big up to you, Sess. Uh, what happens when either yourself or Sess, mm. like you're just not, you know, somewhere, somewhere. What happens with that particular chemistry on, on radio? You, you do your job. At the end of the day, you do your job. You can you can turn on the microphone, you start speaking, you start speaking and you'll smile and laugh throughout the entire link. Mm-hmm. But when it's done, you go back to your mood swing. Oh but, <laughs> but when the mic goes on, yeah. you, you know, you put everything behind the door. This is what I always tell presenters. Like, no matter what has happened in your life. Um, like, for example, I, I, I believe I've shared this story before. Mm-hmm. When my daughter was born, I was in studio right and this is but you see you can't necessarily just wake up and leave there's still a show to be done so you still have to work through it so you could be having a bad day something really serious has happened to you but at that point in time when you're in studio yeah the whole world you shut it out once you get into those doors shut it all out and just focus on those four hours finish your four hours then you can go back to being a human being
Yeah. Did you ever feel like you 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 have been I know you wanted to be there. Do you ever feel like I wish I was there or maybe at the delivery room or something. No, 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 no. Why? No, 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 no. In fact, let me tell you. Let me talk to you. Why are you in delivery rooms? To do what? What are you doing there? Be outside the delivery room. But why are you inside the delivery room? To do what? I mean, to give support. Angalia kama kabiwa Jesus. He supported his wife. You guys watch too many movies. The truth of the matter is childbirth is not as pretty as they put it in the movies. Yeah. Stay outside the door. Let your sister, your mother, your mother-in-law, whatever, be in there. There's no assistance you give whatsoever to in the delivery room as a guy. Me, that's my opinion. I have no business being in a delivery room. Let your sister be in there. Let your mother be in there. Let your sister-in-law, whatever, whoever it is. What, what what are they going to do there that you wouldn't do? Like holding hands, like just supporting, you know, giving encouragement. I, I in fact I recommend this, right? Um, for in fact, Kalundu, the day you get your first baby, mm -hmm. go and make sure that you have someone who's gone through childbirth to be in that delivery room with you. Your man has no business in there doing what? Support. You, you know, he needs to support. Do you know how much you hate us when we're in there? I'm, I'm, I've, I've practiced as a nurse. I've delivered over 90 babies in my career as a nurse. I'm telling you, there's no business yeah. a man has in a delivery room. You can be outside. Yeah. Wait for the baby to deliver. Be told, here's your baby. Come and say, hey, I'm a father now. Yeah. But you do, what are you doing inside there? To do what? So that you can abuse me, shout at me and all those things. There's nothing a man does in a delivery room aside from standing there and either fainting mm -hmm. Or going mad inside there and, and starting to stress out let me tell you no business whatsoever please get someone who has had a baby before to be in that delivery room with you but not your man what but, but i think you're saying that because you are a nurse and then you you delivered babies so i feel like you're saying that from you having that particular experience with other other people and not like your child being born but think about it this way i'm already in fact it's even worse for us as who have been through the medical practition uh, or the medical uh profession here's the problem everything that that nurse does or that doctor does i'm judging it in my head why didn't you do this why didn't you do that so that doctor or that nurse cannot do their job as they're supposed to do it because i'll keep interrupting them because of what i think i know so i have no business being in there what I would love to be is where I would love to be is outside of the delivery room so that when the baby has been delivered, I can come and say so and receive my child, yeah. but not necessarily be inside it, holding your hand and yeah. telling you, oh, it's going to be OK. I don't understand what you're going through. Mm -hmm. Only a woman can understand what you're going through. No man will ever be able to understand what you're going through. Yeah. So what am I doing there? Yeah. yeah. Would you like to be there when uh, when your son is being circumcised? No, your father can be there. <laughs> But <laughs> you, you are there to do what? Doing what? Call the brother, call the uncle, call the father. Let you be there when your child is being circumcised. Yeah. He can identify with it. But I can't identify with childbirth yeah. at all. But I can identify with raising a child. Yeah. Assume you were not on radio and you were still practice, practicing nursing. Uh, given a chance, would you have delivered your, your, your daughter? Never, ever. Never, ever. There's too much emotional connection involved in that. So I cannot deliver my daughter. I would get someone else to do it. Someone I trust. And I'm lucky enough to have um, a family member who's also a pediatrician. He helped me through the entire process when my daughter was growing up and um, she was going through, she had eczema when she was a young child. And um, he really helped a lot. Big shout out to you, Dr. Rain, by the way, Dr. Brian Mwendwa, that's my cousin. Um, he was uh, uh, quite the person. And also Dr. Evans Mjama, he was at uh, Nairobi, they're both at Nairobi Hospital. They were very, very helpful during that period. But to deliver my own kid, never. Even if, even if I know how to do it, yeah but i would never deliver my own child yeah yeah how was the experience um you know delivering the 90 babies how how, how many years um that took me that was during my uh my what do you call it internship at uh, pumwani medical hospital 
90 babies is like the internship like you delivered 90 babies in your internship um there's a quali- there's there's a when when you study being a nurse you've got a target of the number of babies you have to deliver i think it was about 40 that was the target but when you go to pumwani yeah. back then yeah. it was a different experience pumwani babies were being dropped like apples you know the, from a tree they just keep coming up coming 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 so I, in fact i remember during my my rotation there that's when i delivered the most babies but most some of them we delivered at uh at uh, karuri district karura district hospital and also at kenyatta national hospital but the majority of the 90 came from pumwani yeah yeah how how was the experience do you ever like sit down and just think about it yeah i mean there are times i've had family members who come to me and told me why didn't you go and study abroad you know because you know nurses abroad are, are, they earn a quite a good amount of money so sometimes i think about it and i'm like would you ever go back like the experience on its own was easy for me yeah. because i've always been a good student in sciences yeah. so it wasn't necessarily difficult because with medicine I, i believe it's all about if you can if you like reading which i do um if you like learning new things which i do it, it becomes easy for you it becomes like you keep understanding how the body works and once you know how it works when it mal- malfunctions then you know how to fix it but it requires a lot of keeping that that reading over constantly and just reminding yourself about what works what doesn't work what are the challenges here what are the contraindications there and you, you know you keep learning and learning and learning eventually you just it becomes second nature so you just know i need to do this i need that i need this i need that and, and yeah so after a while it becomes second nature but sometimes it is quite a taxing job i i compare medicine and anyone in medicine by the way, big shout out to you you guys are just amazing it's kind of like like having no life in many ways um because you will work very hard the hours are insane and unfortunately in Kenya um, i believe medical practitioners are not paid as they should be paid right now a young doctor who's starting out his career is not earning what they should be earning a young nurse is not earning what they should be earning and even in other professions physiotherapists even uh, people who are in uh, radiography and, and they don't earn what they're supposed to be earning and if we can get to that point where we truly understand what it takes to just graduate and have that hat on your head it's insane it's insane it's quite the pro- it's like military camp yeah. yeah but once you finish there should be a reward and i believe it's time and i hope in in the new government that's going to come through they will recognize medical practitioners and tell them by the way kudos you guys if you could make it through medical school make it through years of practice then you can go ahead and have a successful fruitful life in this country yeah Uh, and also what Mike is trying to say is that if you are around Radio Africa and your water breaks ah. just call him <laughs> he's just at classic 105 just call him he's going to do the delivery don't forget I'll invoice you <laughs> you, you see free medical practice up if you, yeah. oh my goodness